Okay. Do you know what we're talking about? I brought the heat last episode. You did not bring the heat last episode. I, I literally did. brought both things. I said nostalgia nope. TV shows. Nope. And I said the innate ability. I'll admit that you talked more than I did, but no. you definitely did not no, no, bring no. the but heat. But I'll know what you did. You brought up crack again. I never did crack. You never did crack, but you brought up crack house. That's that's a trap house. Trap house. Okay. So it's a trap house. Oh, because I'm not well versed in fucking drug speak, then I can't. Oh burr, 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 burr. shit! Yeah. Bethany, Bethany, and Sean, and Sean. We are a couple of nuts talking. I don't think I've talked about the trap house yet. Oh my god! I mean, I've, ta- I've mentioned the trap house, which is talking about the trap house, but I've never gone into detail. Of I mean, the trap house. All trap houses are equal. They, but they all have their own thing going on. The uh, the same thing, drugs. That's what they have going on. There's always a baby hanging out there. Oh boy. There's always drugs. There's always a dirty ass dog or cat crawling around, you know, mm. licking people's open mouth because you're you're passed out on dope. Whoa. Nodding off. So cats are like that horror where they take the demon, they give you the demon. They take your soul. There was a little dog at the trap house that lived, that little terrier type thing, and she was so cute and sweet, and she was covered in fleas. And Honey, I, used to, I don't want to listen to this. I, I, hold on. And I used, with with I, I used to cuddle with her. I used to cuddle with her, and I used to go. Yeah, dog. I didn't care. And I used to go to the grocery store. And we had to eat something, so I was the guy that would go and boost, which is another word for steal. I, was, I did do that. And I paid my amends. To take keep that in mind. And I would I would steal the dog dog food because it was starving, and I would feed the dog. And I wanted to take it to get a bath, but I just didn't have enough money. I had to scrounge. Up. Honey, being a junkie, it's a full time job. Like I know to figure out how to magically get ten to twenty dollars to get my fix to get well because when you're strung out okay uh trigger warning i don't know maybe some people definitely don't want to hear this kind of stuff but for all you people that have never had an addiction problem or an ism or anything like that when it comes to drugs full disclosure yet again i am a recovering heroin addict also a pill addict and an alcoholic and i i've done a ton of drugs and was strung out on opiates for a long time. And the detox from opiates is very uncomfortable, to say the least. For me, and it doesn't happen to everybody for some reason. Some people don't throw up. For me, when I'm strung out and I'm kicking, or I don't do drugs, um, I'm throwing up, um, full panic mode, anxiety attack, cold sweats, you restless legs, you can't sleep. Uh, it's like the worst flu ever all within an anxiety attack. And for me, I would also like yawn and sneeze and gag all at the same time. Mm. All of the stuff like a dog, yeah. <laughs> like a dog. Like that's what my withdrawal from opiates looks like. And the crazy part about that is, is every time I've relapsed, I I know that's what's going to happen, and it happens anyways. That's the crazy thing about addiction, friends, and that's why I have to treat it every day. And there's certain steps and things that I have to do so I don't do that again. You, you know what's interesting about you talking about your side effects from from recovery or like when you're in withdrawal is that... um. I am a recovering self-harmer, workaholic, enabler, codependent, a whole bunch of a debtor, a whole bunch. Uh, I was probably sicker than Sean because his was like, they say that, you know, because I have a sickness in my brain. Yeah. Well, Um, so addiction is is as well, but it's also, you know, a physical it's different, but it right. is right. Uh, the only reason I say that I'm sicker is maybe because I have to hear that because I so 
before I went and got help, I just thought you were sick and right. there's nothing wrong with me. I just want to thank me for and, you. Oh God, I want to oh thank God. me for no, you for introducing you this into this really amazing, beautiful world of recovery. This is really interesting because in my recovery of these things and all, and getting closer to God and all of the that, what my addiction really was I mean, a, a myriad of things, but one of the biggest things was I was addicted to fear and I was addicted to being anx- anxious and addicted to worry and stress and just complete unhealthy baseline of disaster and catastrophic uh, worry. It's, in my it's life. very similar because but, oh, go ahead. W- in my addiction, fear was one of like if not the main catapult of me using and drinking right so it we, we, that's what i'm saying we were we had the same thing it's this it is the exact same thing just you go outside of yourself and i decide to beat myself up from well, within well mine tends to get me homeless and, and or i, I was it, homeless and or but that's not because of your addictions but that's cuz you came out to LA to well it was because of my addictions a, because of my career in the codependency and taking care of men and not taking care of myself and and trying to fix other people instead of myself. I mean, it really was. I set myself up for my life. They're very be, similar, but there couldn't be further from. They're a yin and yang of similarity. 100%. God, this laundry is killing me over here. I used to. So. Gosh. Oh, uh, wait, but I do want to say this one part. What? That when, when Sean and I got together and he was in, he was trying to to kick he didn't tell me, obviously, that he was trying to kick from pills. What he told me was he had the stomach flu. And one of my... Why would I tell you I'm trying to kick pills, right. baby? Why would I tell you that? But one of my fears is throwing up. That wouldn't make I me a very good at- a addict. very, very big phobia of throwing up yeah. and getting sick. And so when he told me he had the stomach flu, it was to his benefit because I hightailed out. Because I don't want to get sick. I don't want to throw up. And I can't hear someone throw up. So it would just cause me to check out. Which was probably the opposite of what you needed. And right. it's also the opposite well, of what you need when anyone. You'd sick. never been with. Uh, you've been with alcoholics and yeah. stuff like that. But you've never been with a heroin opiate no, addict before. No. You, were the, uh, you were the greatest addict yeah. I've ever dated. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I am. The, I, yeah, yeah. You were the best at it, babe. I was a really good drug addict. Like, people didn't know that I was on drugs. Like, uh-uh. you were just functioning. I was, it was functioning, but kind very of. like I was like I a mean, ghoul. Yeah, that's how I. That's the only thing I can compare myself to is a ghoul, because uh, I was, you know, s- your energy and your money would go missing, and you didn't know why. And I would, I would be there to help you look for things, and I and would to give me you. stories that weren't true. Right, and I would comfort you and love you, and and then. I'd be this ghoul behind the scenes and I'd be in the bathroom for a long time. But I think I started this off because I wanted to, the trap house I was living in. So there was a couple that lived there. Mm-hmm. Um, you told me the, that. the female uh, half is since passed away. God rest her soul. She passed away sober, which was good. She had a, a brain aneurysm or something like that randomly in sobriety. And she passed away. And we actually used to see her living under the bridge right up the street. And whenever I'd see her, I'd be like, oh, my God. Fuck. Was that after 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Shortly after. She, she's she been dead for a few years now. Hmm. Um, And then she had a sister who would hang out there often. And the guy had a brother that was there often. And then the little dog and then me. And then I kind of came in. They would always kick the brother out, and then the girlfriend would leave. So it was mainly just me and this other dude. And then there was another guy that you know who would come in every now and again, and he got arrested, so he was gone for a few months. But he's doing really well now, too, that other guy. And, um, I don't think he li- – maybe he listens to this. I don't know. But um, it was a really dark, dingy place. And – Trigger warning, if you don't want to hear this stuff, it's kind of, it's sad and it's dark. So we're going to go dark again for a few minutes here. They had a newborn baby, you know, and they were both strung out on drugs. And she would breastfeed the baby and the baby would get, it was like on drugs. 
and you would see the baby like nod off and then the baby would get you know kind of sick and cry and it was a really really dark place that was I the mean, trap people house. are listening to this on their way to work it's just you know that's I, it's just just so you know where i've been i just want to let the nuts yeah, know yeah. where i've been and where i come from and how I am now. My life is completely 180. You're welcome. And you have a you are a huge part in that. Yeah, welcome. You're a huge part in that, honey. And I just am feeling very grateful today. And so I just wanted to share about You just wanted to make people feel and think things. It was dark. I no, could I'm go kidding. into more detail about no, it. No, you don't need to go into any more detail about it. It was a dark place I used to live in. And now I'm at this point in my life where I just I wake up and I tap into things going on through prayer and meditation, and I feel good for the most part, and I love it. If it wasn't for that darkness that I went through, maybe that's the point of this. If you're going through some darkness right now, or you have gone through some darkness and you don't know what to do with it, turn it around, because it's brought me to this point now where I absolutely love my life, and I know that that darkness... You wouldn't have help. the light without the dark. Exactly, and it's going to help somebody else at some point because they're going to. I'm going to be able to relate to them, or they're going to be able to open up to me about something, and there's going to be zero judgment because I've been in that darkness, and it's probably been even weirder and darker on my end. I guess that's the old adage where they say you know, you don't know what people are going through. You never know the battle that somebody's fighting at that moment. But you don't have to fight the battle anymore if you just hand it over every day. Get out of your own self. That's what I do every day. And I don't want to go back to that trap house. But that's not to say that I won't go back to that trap house if I don't do what I need to do to take care of myself. Are you done? Yeah, I guess I am. What's up, nuts? Oh, man. Did we even say ACON podcast on Instagram? What's up, Nuts? Here's another week with a couple of Nuts. Here we go again. Another one. We, today, we're going to have some salt added and some cinnamon and some powdered sugar on our Nuts. Did you know that Barack Obama smoked menthol cigarettes? He still might. Yeah. He I still might. Well, but while he was president, he smoked menthols. Yeah, I have heard that. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that he was gay, too? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <That's a real laughs> I'm sure y'all heard that but rumor before, right? Wait, we should do that over again. Do the whole thing over again. Okay, okay. Did you know that Barack Obama smoked menthol cigarettes? What? Yeah. No. Like during his presidency, it's like a known thing. He smoked. I don't know if you can find it. It's there. not known. I had no idea. Yeah. Did you also know that he was gay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's what you want. Yeah. That was. Yeah. There's a rumor out there that he likes men. Which is totally fine. I mean, is it a rumor or does everyone know? I mean, there was that one guy that went on the news and he said that he had sexual relations. And I'm pretty I don't, sure there's more than one. Yeah, there's no lawsuits happening. That guy went on yeah. the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. putting you on the news. There was no defamation. There was no, no lawsuits. Court. Yeah. I mean, what's that all about? If somebody's yeah. going on the news saying, Yo, we used to, uh, Sean and I used to just fucking suck each other. Not that I would even really care about that. It's <laughs> not the point. But if you're like. But you're living a lie. Right, 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 right. And right. then you are trying to run a company. Uh, well, it is a company. Country <laughs> company. Trying to run a country. Fine line. Uh, not a fine line. It's exactly the same. But that's They're the point of the fine line saying, honey. That's what a fine line means. Uh, no, but a fine line still means there's there's a definitive side. Because you can, you know, no matter how thin you make that line, there's always two sides to it, just like Phil says about pancakes, you know. Oh. But speaking of dudes, I always see dudes when I want like my lunch break or something like that. There's a gym bias, Equinox, and there's always like dudes, alphas, whatever you want to call them, alpha males, just eye fucking each other, just checking each other yeah. out. But is it like? Is it like I want to be inside your butthole, or is it like no, they, I want to be inside your skin and look like? You? Yeah, it's even creepy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like creepy. Uh, it's it's deeper. But I did hear this one go like this one guy saw another. He's like, "Whoa, what's up, Quadzilla?" I called him Quadzilla because yeah. it was quads. Yeah. And I was like, "Wow, that guy does have really nice quads." Like I'll look at him too, and I'll be like, "Shit, 
Do I? And then I'll like I'll try to tell myself I'm like Psh, I don't care. I don't need to look like that. I don't need to be all fit like these guys. Look at these guys. What are they running from, huh? And I'm sitting there fucking munching on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's fucking beef jerky. I think it's funny because I <clears throat> I talked to my friend who I haven't seen in a long time, and um, she was just asking me like I I used to work with her and I don't see her at all anymore. And so we call on the phone once in a while, and she calls me, and she's like, what do you do? Like, what do you do to, to, to stay fit? I'm like, I don't work out. I don't exercise like that. Like, I don't run or any of that stuff. She's like, yeah, what do you do? I'm like, I do this thing where it's, like, kind of stretching and my core. It's called T-tap. And she's like, huh. So long story short, she's like, I'm going to go get that. So she texts me after. This is, like, three months ago. She texts me after. She's like, I bought everything. I got everything T-tap. I'm doing my T-tap. I can't wait. I was like, all right, it works. It's hard at first, but then you, what happens is like you go hard for a month, and then, I mean, for the rest of I've been doing it for over 10 years, and uh, I do it whenever I want. I've been hard since I was like fucking yeah. 11. And then, so three <laughs> months later, I was like, oh, I haven't talked to her in a while. I'm going to I'm gonna text her and see if she's around. And I was like, how's T-tap going? And she's going, she goes, I haven't done anything. I haven't done it yet. I haven't done it at all. And I was like, no. That's very typical. I feel it like is. a lot of people. I mean, we're the same. We have a ton of books that we are like, oh, shit, we got to get this book. And yeah. then we get, now we just have a pile. I can't wait to read this. You on the other on the other day on the Buy Nothing Facebook, thing, you're like, oh, my God, there's all these old books from the early 1900s. We got to get them. We got them. Now we just have another pile just of so books. You know, well, it's also because they're not all 100 years old. If And if anyone has old books that are from 1930 or earlier. I want them, please. Yeah. Some of the pictures please. are real cool. Those please buildings Please are... give them to us. I read them. I want to know about them. Let me go back into the trap house that I was no, living. No, let's talk about books. So we just don't kidding. Books. Let's talk about books. Because um, I just said that I've been hard since I was 11. It took me back to when I first started hardcover book. to learn how to masturbate. Oh. And I remember. Hey, guess what we talk about masturbation in? What? Crinkle, 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 cringeworthy, which is our new single, which is streaming everywhere now. Go on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, YouTube's, Dozer, Beezer, Goozer, SoundCloud, CD all of baby, them. CD baby, distro kid. I don't know. Those are the companies that uh, oh. distribute okay, this song, so but you, you can't listen to them on there. Oh, I thought you said you could. But go listen to it because <laughs> we say the word masturbate Me in too. it. Me too. Look for it. But when I first started, when I learned, I don't even remember how. Or what had happened. I remember being very young. God, maybe like sixth grade when I saw my first porno at a friend's house. I think I might have jacked off in front of everybody under the blanket. But oh, wow. we also had one of those black boxes that got the Spice Channel, which was really cool. So we got one of those illegal cable boxes where you got Damn, all the channels. My dad had that. And, and it was Channel 69. It was the Spice Channel. Well, looky there. And my parents thought by just saying, no, don't watch this, that I wouldn't watch it when they weren't well, home. Well, you also were boys, and they really didn't care. It was literally the only thing that was on whenever my parents weren't home was Spice. Mm -hmm. Just on in the background. Yeah. You know, friends were over, out back smoking weed, whatever Spice channel on. Uh, first started to learn how to masturbate, probably 11-ish. Hmm. Lost my virginity when I was 12, so oh not much longer because I'm a pimp like that. Um, that's sad. It was with the neighbor girl. You no, know, it was. It was. You know, it was what it was. No, I know. I don't mean like I'm sad it didn't ha that it happened because it's your life. But I'm saying like that's yeah, I wish sad it would have been twelve year olds to be doing that. I wish it was more of like an intimate. It you, was you meaningful. Wish you wined and dined her before because I loved her as a friend. Anyways, I learned how to masturbate. I used soap a lot. I used like the body soap and. You know, that was my parents. We got not like the best soap back then. It Slick was just dick. like whatever. Oh, man. But let me tell you what. I'd be jerking off. I'd be taking like three, four showers a day. Yeah. Okay. Even when we were on vacation, like as a family or something like that. I did the shower again. Oh, you know what I would do? Uh, what? It's just I, easier for you because you don't have a mess. You, you don't have easier. a mess. You could you could sit there and move around. I'll tell you what that I did. There's goo everywhere. I discovered the bath. Tub. Well, hold on a second. Can I finish mine really yeah, quick? Go it's ahead. very quick and almost done. Oh, I very much very like funny. me. Um, soap, and it fucking 
burned after a piss. My piss would burn. You think he so would learn after the hundredth time? I still use the soap sometimes. Isn't honey. that why they use lotion? I still use the soap sometimes, honey. You know that. I know that. You know that. You enjoy it. You'll um, you'll do it forever because it's nostalgic. It's real nice. That's man. Call back last what so- episode. What what soap did you use? Like I'm sure that smell. It was like no. It oh. was like dial. So like that's a, what I'm saying. And maybe when you smell dial, you'll be like, oh. It might have even been like shampoo, Bob's shampoo or Pantene Pro V or something. What if shit you walk like down like the Isle of Rite Aid and you take a whiff of dial and you're like, <laughs> oh, that was my favorite part. Oh, and I just come right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The comps. Yeah, but it was a lot messier when I was younger. There was a lot more of a mess of shooting all over the place and cobwebs. No, just cobwebs. Kinda, just kind of oozes Ooh, out. Ooh, I just made that up. Cockwebs. You were Spider Manning everywhere. Kind of oozes out now. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, mainly. It crawls out. Mainly in the shower. And my parents, I never got walked in on jerking off. There might have been one time when I was just uh, just going under my blanket. And then my mom might have opened the door slowly to check on me. And I just stopped. And then you pretend you were asleep. And then she kind of stood there and stared at me for like a good 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck? No, I got to start over. I start just going, just going away. But never got walked what in. What if it got worse? That. Thank God it went away. What if your dick got harder when mom came in? <laughs> Did I tell you about the time that I was in a sober living and I was jacking off on the front no. couch? What? It, on the front couch? And I still haven't gotten my story. So there was the sober living I lived in. First time out of rehab. Real nice. We all got our own apartments. So it was just wow. me. Yeah, it was me. And I had an apartment to myself for a while because there was nobody. Music cares is this music thing that paid for it. So. I got a real good one, and I didn't have a roommate, so I had this apartment all by myself. I had a little living room. It was dope. Two-bedroom wow. apartment in Hollywood all by myself. Oh my gosh. I was sitting there jerking off, and I don't even know what it was. It was probably like a fucking Christina Aguilera video or something like that on MTV. I don't mm. even think she saw it, but it was a chick. So I was like, ugh, female. And then there was this gay guy that lived there, too. A lovely guy. Still talk to him, actually. And he came walking in, and I was like, oh. He didn't see my dick because yeah. it was in my pants, and as I was, I was just getting started. Yeah, just getting started, and he poked us. It was like fucking one thirty in the morning. It's like, why are you coming into my apartment? Yeah. You're Why'd allowed you to. You're allowed to come in the. Li- you can't lock the doors at a sober oh. living. You're allowed to come and go in the living room to watch TV. Like that was open for everybody, I guess, but not the bedroom. Like you could have went into somebody else's. Right, uh. but I fucking wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy came walking in. And I stopped. He's like, oh, don't stop. Oh my god! Yeah, and I'm that's like, creepy. I was like, "What are you talking about, man?" And I went into the kitchen. And I made like a case of deer. So I was like, "What's up, man? What are you doing?" You know. And then it was, so Sean, right there, so I people should've, pleasing. I should've. You should have been like, "I'm gonna continue." Can you shut the door? Can I use your mouth to finish? Mm-hmm. And he would have let me. Obviously, honey. No doubt about that. He's a sweet boy. No, I uh, I discovered the bathtub pressure, and so oh, I would faucet. I would butt my butt. Up against the, you know, where the faucet is. Legs straight Legs up. Legs straight up. <laughs> and I would just pummel that Dude, thing. That's hilarious. And, <laughs> oh, my God. It would happen so fast. It was so good. Full throttle. Lose myself really? in the feeling. Move motion. Yeah. How M&M old were you? Oh, gosh. Uh, I was older, honey. I, I didn't even hit puberty until I was 18. So I was, I was probably doing that. 15? Um, mm, well, yeah. Probably like probably started at fourteen. Oh, I actually, to be honest, I have no idea. You're so I, tiny then. I was. I I to tell you that like I don't know how old I was. I don't know yeah. because I don't remember. Yeah. But but I do remember that part. And then there was a time where I yeah I was taking hey, uh, your favorite part. It was my favorite part. And I would take a bath uh, a lot, and then I would keep filling it up and letting the drain go and filling it up because they thought I was just still doing one bath. I'm making it warmer. My mom, because she was such a stickler about all utilities because we were yeah. we didn't have money. So, like, if she'd hear the bath water going too much, yeah. she would lose her mind. She would be like, Bethany Lynn, why are you running so much water? I'm like, it's cold. I'm just heating it up. Yeah, you little know? did you know, mama. And then. Baby B's getting her nut off. And then uh, and then I had this this pen, this red pen. It was like a felt tip, so it had like a weird shape to it. And it had this ribbing. It oh was God. like a ribbed. It felt really cool. Yeah. Like, it was a grip It part? had like a grip. Yeah. But that's but it where was, like the pen part is. No, this was just the whole pen was all one oh, kind okay. of like ribbed. It was ribbed, 
but like real tiny, like that, 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 real tiny. So it felt rough. You used a pen? I would use the pen. Did you clean the pen? I don't think I ever no, did. No, you didn't. I don't think I ever you did. You never cleaned that pen. And it would just sit on my desk. Oh, yeah. man. Where'd that pen come? Was it brand new? If I out saw the that package? pen, I would be like a boy and get a hard on. I'd be like, yeah. oh, that's my favorite part. Did it come out of the package or was it one of mom's laying around and you're just like, I'm going to take this? I don't know. I was grateful. It was the first probably pen I used. And I was like, this is a good one. Because then I, when I couldn't find that pen, then I would use another pen and it not would not same. work. Not I same. couldn't get anything. It was like it was like I was attached to him like a boyfriend. Did you use the pen to write with too? I probably did because it was pretty. It was red. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You don't think about that stuff. You're just like, and done. And now I'm going to write a letter to my friend. That's <laughs> like, funny. Yeah. Oh, writing it. letters. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Remember writing letters? Yeah. We still write each other to, in letters to each other. I write you letters. Whenever I'm in rehab. Well, why did you have to make that present tense? Lovely letters. Um, God, letters. That's nostalgic, huh? Yeah. What, you in rehab? No, le- letters. letters. Yeah. Just letters. Yeah, they're trying to get us away from that. You got to make sure you teach everybody cursive. Keep writing cursive. Man, like, yeah. What was the point of cursive writing? Like, what was that? Was that really cursive. necessary? Or yes. was that the first? Cursive was the first, and then we did the weird straight line one after that? Yeah, like cursive writing is known. So your your hands are connected to your heart. And so as you write, and it's fluid, right? You never lift oh, the so pen. So back then, they actually wanted us to be connecting to our heart. Yes, we oh want to be connected to our heart. And it was beautiful to look at. It look still at is. It, I mean, it's gorgeous. And so... You're getting back in the day, everything was to use as many senses as possible and to delight the eye and being closer to God meant to make something out of nothing that was artistic. I mean, in the 60s and 70s, they were like, that's it. Everything's going to be a block. Everything's got to be a square. And there's no decorative anything. I mean, you go into any public uh, building or any new apartment, it's just awful do you is there any letters that you got when you were younger that you remember hmm. like from somebody that had a crush on you or somebody had something to say to you i do remember a, a getting a letter i can't remember what it was from or who could, and it was like three or four pages because i can remember the unfolding of it and it had to like be folded also to the left because the envelope was smaller yeah and I want to say it was either from like a best friend where something happened or, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't ever have any boyfriends cause I was thought I was gay, but, oh. um, we had any girlfriends give me letters. No, I really like, didn't, I'm trying to think, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they read did. the letter I, I wrote, wrote it in, in my sleep. sleep. No, it's Robert Plant and yeah. Alison Krauss. Did we talk about that show? Oh, man. I don't know. But there was this one letter I got uh, from a girl in high school. Doesn't The Cure have a letter song, too? Letter to Elise. Letter to Elise, yeah. I, I see was, the red color. Yeah. I was and am always have been. A charmer, <laughs> 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 you know. So I um, and I've always been kind of. A, I've been a relationship guy, so I've always had a girlfriend, I'll like always. And I've been cheated on a lot because I get so possessive and psychotic that I, not that I push them to that, but hmm. I guess I convinced myself that it was my fault. Anyways, there was this, there was this new, there was a new girl in high school, very pretty, tall cool into cool music like really nice musician like talented and i was dating this one girl that was just a piece of shit she was but we were at that age and i was a piece of shit too and uh i was never a piece of of shit. course you know i was speaking for myself and burbank and and my crew of friends you know who you are um she wrote me this letter one day like we all would hang out and you know little stoner parties and stuff like that and she wrote me and i didn't know and Please she wrote me this, yeah. The letter. I, I wrote it in my sleep. She wrote me this really lovely letter expressing her feelings for me. And I had no clue. 
And it was like, it was such a Wonder Years moment. Like, mm-hmm. I think that even happened in an episode of Wonder where there was one girl who was so. What s- would yeah. you do if you wrote? And then I made the, the choice, of you. course, to go with the 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 one girl who ended up cheating on me again and it was just a lovely letter and i I remember having to tell her i was like god i I like you too a lot you're really cool yada yada but it was just very poetic and very well written for like a 10th or 11th grader i guess it was different back then actually i don't know maybe kids are smart these days but that's the one letter that i really remember getting was from that chick and it was never the same after that course not she was embarrassed because she didn't go with it she was embarrassed and i think she yeah yeah we did have another interaction where she got drunk one night and she expressed the feelings to me again and And you didn't do anything i didn't you didn't go to the light you went to the dark like an idiot yeah per usual till you met me and then i changed your life you absolutely did you absolutely did i think she was italian too of course very similar uh, skin tones. Oh, yeah. So you got a second Dark hair, I did. Her. And she's a musician, and she's funny, and you said she's the uh, sweetest she person. She definitely in the world. wasn't, I don't know, I didn't know her all that well, but that's the letter that I remember the most. There's definitely other letters too, but that's, that's for some reason what I remember. Yeah. <sighs> talk about yawning. it, huh? I was yawning. Are you tired? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, we could end on that note. Let's go take, let's be grown ass people and go take a grown ass adult nap. I would love nap. to what take a say? nap. It's a beautiful day out. People sometimes shame people for taking naps. Yeah, who um, was that? I saw a clip on TikTok. I think it was with the guy that I love from Walking Dead and the bear, uh, the guy that does that interview with Shia LaBeouf. He's like, he's this grown ass man taking a nap. Who the fuck a grown ass man taking a nap? Yeah. Shit was funny the way he was so upset about it. But sometimes it's real nice and it like it just resets your day. You know, TikTok is is completely out of control. Out of control. And I watch the videos. It's out of control now. The about things what? that the pranks and it's just like there's no there's no line anymore. There's no like But they're all set up. I mean, sometimes they're not. If one of anyone my f- did any of that to me, I'd punch him in the face. That happens. One of my favorites right now is the bums, uh, the drone, the drones that go over like homeless encampments. Mm-hmm. And there's like people fucking cracked out of their minds. Because, you know, crackheads, you used to think somebody was always mm-hmm. watching them. And now mm-hmm. it's like legit. We are. There's yeah. millions of TikTok's people watching them on TikTok. And they dude, there was this one, there was these one crackheads. They were in a car. Mm-hmm. They pull out a bow and arrow to try to get the drone down. This fucker Good had a bow. I know, but that's horrifying that it's a crack, horrifying. homeless crackhead yes, is driving around with a bow and arrow in his but back just take, seat. Just subtract the crack part from them, and then all of a sudden they're they're like warriors championing totally their own it. privacy. Totally. But for then it. now that they're on crack, it's crazy that they have a bow and arrow. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like we we have to figure that out. Yeah. But um, they attack the drone a lot. They'll throw rocks, shoes, bottles. Sometimes they get them too, and then the drone owner will put in the description went. And gave the guy like you know forty bucks for my drone back. And of course, they're going to take the forty bucks. You get a lot of crack you for forty bucks. T- given him ten. Could have given him ten. Yeah. I don't know if you could get a lot of crack for forty bucks know, these if days. If you don't know actually. this, when negotiating with any crackhead, you always have a go in, low. No, no, you have an invisible coupon that they don't know is there, and the coupon is crack. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever you five dollars, yeah, you get a blast of crack for you, fucking three dollars. Actually, you can negotiate like this. I'll give you forty bucks for that, or I'll give you forty bucks for that drone. And then before they answer, go, I mean ten. And then they'll go, okay, I'll take ten. Oh, I only, shit, I, I only, only have, have a five. I only have three. I only three, right? And they're like, okay, well, I need to eat too. Here's a dollar. Here's your drone. Yeah, like. Coupons after coupons. That's true. Yeah. That's bringing it full circle back to the trap house. Let me go back into that. No, but there was this one time I went down to Skid Row uh, when I was strung out, and a buddy of mine had a couple bucks. He's like, oh, I'm going to go take a blast real quick. And I think for like three bucks, he went and got a just a hit of yeah. crack. And uh, that's what the price of crack used to go for. And today's, Not in this market. In today's economy, I'm not really sure, but... 
But since we brought it full circle, let's go ahead and end it on that note, baby duel. We thank everybody for listening uh, to this episode. It was a little yeah, all over the place. That's the, what, per usual. Not but usually go we do it. listen to our music on, at Haunted H E I R. Yeah, Haunted again, Air. Crinkle, crinkle, cringeworthy. Streaming everywhere. The Witch streaming everywhere. We got another single coming out. We have a full EP coming out next year. So stay tuned. Please follow it and save it and then also this podcast you can rate it on spotify you can give it stars there's an option to hit the stars give it five stars give it stars and and tell us stuff you want us to hear us talk about yeah. like talk to us on our social media say hey talk about this or what do you think about this whatever we want to give you what you want i want to give you what you want everybody that's our favorite part that's our favorite part is giving you what you want. Stay naughty, everybody. Bye for now. Kim says. Bethany. Bethany. And Sean. And Sean. We are a couple of nuts. Talking.